Okay, in this section of 5.3, we're going to talk about how to find our reference angles. So if theta is an angle in standard position, its reference angle is the acute angle theta prime formed by the terminal side of theta and the horizontal axis. So let's, let's think about this one really quick. In quadrant one, if I have an angle that looks like this, okay, its terminal side or its initial side is here, terminal side is here. This would be angle theta, right? It has to be an acute angle formed by the terminal side of the horizontal and the horizontal axis, okay? So isn't this the same thing? Terminal side and the angle formed by the horizontal axis. So in quadrant one, the reference angles are really easy. Theta is equal to theta prime. Now that's only a true statement for quadrant one, okay? Now, so I'm gonna show you how do you handle it with quadrant two, three, and four. So let me show you. Let's say in quadrant two, you have an angle started here, ended here, okay? This is angle theta. Now we create our right triangle over here. And then what's in here is theta prime, all right? What's in there is theta prime. So I need to find the measurement of that angle. It has to be acute and it has to be the angle that's formed with the, with the x-axis, okay? Now, we always use just theta prime, right, when we found our six trig function. So as a sidebar, just so you know, the sine of theta is equal to the sine of theta prime, all right? Now, notice theta and theta prime aren't always the same thing, but the sine of them are, okay? So that's why we can use this whole thing. And the same is true with any of the trig functions. So let's think about this. In quadrant two, if I wanted to find this measurement, I know theta and I know I need this. Well, I know 180 degrees is a straight line, don't I? So in order to find theta prime in degree mode, I would simply take 180 and I would subtract theta. Now, what if it was in radians? Well, what's 180 in radians? It's just pi minus theta. Okay, so what if it's our angle theta comes all the way down here to quadrant three? There it is. So when I draw my right triangle, my theta prime is this angle right there. Okay, it's that angle right there. So I need to think about what would that angle be? So the logic is this. Obviously theta is greater than 180, right? But if I took the 180 away, then I would be left with the acute angle that's here. So in degree mode, thinking in degrees, to find theta prime in this case, I start with theta and I subtract 180. Similarly with radians, theta prime would be start with theta and subtract 180. Sorry, subtract pi. Sorry. Okay, and then what about the scenario where the, the initial side is here? And theta comes all the way down here and creates this angle. Okay, well, where's theta prime? Theta prime is right there. So I need to think about it. It's greater than 180, it's greater to 270, but it's less than 360, isn't it? And if I subtracted theta from 360, I would be left with the acute angle in here. So in degrees, if it's in quadrant four, I would take theta prime and I had 360 degrees minus theta. So in radians, 360 degrees is equivalent to two pi minus theta. Okay, I forgot my degree marks on these. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Now I'm gonna walk you through some examples of how you handle it when it's positive or negative so that you know what you're doing. Okay, number one, find the reference angle prime, theta prime for the given angle theta. Sketch it and label theta prime. Okay, so 150 degrees is like right here to right there. This is theta, right? So theta prime is inside this angle right here. So hopefully your drawing is better than mine. Maybe I'll do it in a different color so it's clearer for you. Theta prime is that angle right there. So it's in quadrant two. So I'm gonna follow the pattern I showed you. So I would just take 180 degrees minus 150 degrees. That gives me 30 degrees. So theta prime is 30 degrees. That's it. Look at number two. 
315. Well, where does 315 fall? Well, that's a fourth quadrant angle. Theta prime is right there. Theta is on the outside, right? So it's fourth quadrant, so what does the rule say? If it's in the quadrant four, I'm going to take 360 and I'm going to subtract 315 and I get 45 degrees. So theta prime is 45 degrees. Now, what if it's negative 315? Let's re reverse this. So initial is here. Terminal ends up being over here, doesn't it? So theta is negative though. So where's my theta prime? Still inside that right triangle. Now, if it's negative, you have an initial, uh, an additional step that you need to do. The next thing you wanna do is find the co-terminal angle for this. So notice my, my notation, it's theta one. We did this before. Remember when we did co-terminals, we added a revolution, 360 or subtracted it, because we need it to be positive. So let's add a revolution of 360 and I get 45 degrees. Now I ask myself, is this an acute angle made with the x-axis and the terminal side of that angle? Yes, it is. So since it meets those criteria, it's also theta prime. Now, it's not always the case, and I'll show you some examples in a moment, okay? Look at number four. This time we're going in radian mode, three pi over four. Three pi over four falls right over here in quadrant two. So there's theta, theta prime is inside that triangle. So the rule says in quadrant two, to find theta prime, I'm gonna take pi and subtract three quarters of a pi. Well, if I need to get a common denominator, that makes it four over four, so hopefully you know, theta prime will then be pi over four. Here's a negative one, negative five pi over four, so initial, negative five pi over four. So this would be, that's more than one pi, right? So if I'm going this way, this would be negative pi and a little bit more would make it negative five pi over four. So this would be theta, but theta prime is inside that triangle made with the x-axis. So I've got to find theta prime. Now, again, it's a negative angle. So we need to find the coterminal first. So we add that by adding a revolution. Now that's two pi, right? Well, I need a common denominator. So what's that gonna be? That's gonna make it eight pi over four. And so then that'll give me three pi over four. Now, three pi over four is not an acute angle because look at it. Three pi over four is this angle right here. Okay, it's right there, it's not acute. So I'm gonna to have to do an additional thing and it's, it's not acute and it falls in quadrant two. So now I go to my quadrant two rule of thumb. So I'm gonna take theta prime, I'm gonna say pi minus three pi over four. So just like we did before, when you take pi and you subtract three quarters of pi, you're left with a quarter of pi. So theta prime is pi over four again. Let's look at number six. Okay, it's a positive radian angle, 11 pi over six. Okay, that puts us over here in quadrant four. There's theta. Theta prime is right there. Has to be a, an, an acute angle made with the X axis. Okay, so if it's in quadrant four, the rule says, remember the rule, it says if it's a quadrant four, four we're gonna take two pi and subtract what we're given. 11 pi over six, okay? Now, if I get a common denominator of six, that would make that 12 pi over six, wouldn't it? So if I subtract, I get theta prime is just pi over six, and that is an acute angle, and it is the one that's made with the x-axis. So we're good to go. Number seven, negative 322. Where does that put me? Okay, so if the initial side is here, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. So 320 is gonna put us right in here somewhere. Theta prime is right there. So let's think. Okay, it's negative, so we have to do that extra coterminal step. 
which will look like this. So we take the negative 322, we add a full revolution. And what do I have left? I get 38 degrees left. Well, then I ask myself, is that a positive acute angle with the x-axis? It is. So it's also my theta prime. It's my reference angle. All right. Now, look at this. this these are in radians. So it's going to look a little different. Um, but let's figure this out. We can do this. All right, so if I draw my quadrants, just think, negative 2 pi, 2.5 radians, sorry. So think of it like this, when it's in this mode, not without, without the pi's. So um, this would be 0, and this would be negative 3.14, okay? 3.14 is pi, right? So negative 2.5 would mean I start here and I end up over here somewhere, don't I? Now the angle I'm concerned about for theta prime is this angle right in there. There's my theta prime. So I'm going to treat it. First of all, it's a negative angle. So I need to, to find the coterminal first. So let's do that. So theta coterminal would be negative 2.5 plus a full revolution. So it's gonna be two pi. Now you can just use your calculator to do this and use the pi button, okay? Essentially, what's going to happen is pi is 3.14, so 2 times 3.14 is going to give you 6.28, right? So what is that going to leave us? Well, that's going to leave us with... So when we do this calculator math, we're going to end up with a coterminal angle at 3.8 radians. Now, if 3.14 is over here, positive or negative, 3.8 is still too big, right? It falls in quadrant 3. So it's still greater than 180. It's not acute at all. Definitely greater than 90 degrees. So we need to do our rule of thumb if it's in quadrant three. So we're going to subtract pi from it. So to find our theta prime, we're gonna do 3.8 radians minus pi, which is 3.14, right? and I get 0.6 radians. Now, whatever decimal is given here is where you can round to, okay? But make sure you label it radians. So this one's a little different because radians. Let's try another one with radians. Look at number nine. Okay, this one is 3.4 radians, so it's positive though. So if 3.14 is right here, 3.4 would be down here, wouldn't it? So, Theta prime is this angle right here. That's what we want. So it's greater than pi. So 3.4 minus 3.14 is gonna give us 0.26 radians. And I could have rounded this to one decimal or two. That's fine. I'm not gonna be real strict on that. I'm looking for your process, okay? So hopefully that makes some sense. Let's try the back page. Now, a lot of the back page is gonna be review. Now it says evaluate the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of the angle using our unit circle. All right, so I have my unit circle out here. Um, it says 30, 300 degrees. So let's find 300 degrees, that's right here. There it is in radians and here's the corresponding point, right? So what is it asking me to do? It's saying find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. So I'm looking for this. I'm looking for the sine of 300 degrees, the cosine of 300 degrees, and the tangent of 300 degrees, okay? So just a food for thought, you can't just say sine equals. You have to have an angle here in degrees or radians. It has to have an angle attached, all right? So remember the sine is the y value. So the sine is negative square root of three over two. The cosine is one half, and the tangent, if you remember my tangent trick, since in radians it only has one three, it would just be the square root of three. However, it is negative because it's in quadrant four. Let's try negative 495. Now we gotta do a little thinking on this guy. Let's find out what angle this corresponds to coterminally. So uh, coterminal would be negative 495, plus 360 gets me to negative 135. Let's add another revolution to get it to the positive angles because that's all we have on our unit circle. If I add another revolution, I get 225. 
So I'm essentially looking for the for 225 on my unit circle. So where's 225? This is the place I'm looking at. Now it corresponds to negative 495. It's the same place. So I'm going to say neg sine of negative 495 degrees, the cosine of negative 495, and the tangent of negative 495. Okay. Now, that being said, let's look at back at our unit circle and see what is the y value there. The y value there is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent is negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by itself, which is a positive 1. Okay, so don't let the negative angle trip you up. All right, negative pi five, sorry, negative 4 pi over 3. Negative 4 pi over 3. So again, let's put this in positive angle notation so we can look find our corresponding angle. So if I add 2 pi, what's that going to be? Well, if I needed 3 down here, that'll make that 6, won't it? So this will be a 2 pi over 3. Okay, so 2 pi over 3 is like over here. Okay, 2 pi over 3 is where I'm looking then on my unit circle. Right there. So my answers are still going to be in terms of the radians. So, so I'm still going to say the sine of negative 4 pi over 3, the cosine of negative 4 pi over 3, and the tangent of negative 4 pi over 3. Okay, so where does that put me on my unit circle? So the sine is positive, square root of 3 over 2. The cosine is negative, 1 half. And the tangent is of 2 pi over 3, so there's 1, 3, so it's the square root of 3. And since my sines and cosines are different sines, my tangent would be negative. All right, hope that makes a little bit of sense. Let's look at the next section. Okay, in these last two sections, this is review material. So I'm going to do one, and I'll set you up to do your own, and I'll reveal the key at the end because I have two examples in each, but it's, it's review material that we've already done. So it says find the indicated trig value, so you're only finding one, in the specified quadrant. So let's think about this. Okay, this one says quadrant two. So I'm in quadrant two, all right, and it says the cotangent is negative three. Well, remember cotangent is x over y, and it must be over one, right? <clears throat> so I look at this and decide, okay, what's negative, the x or the y? Well. In quadrant two, the x has to be negative, and the y must be positive. So then I find my uh, hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. So 3 squared is 9 plus 1 squared is 10. Square root, and we make it square root of 10. And now it's just asking me, what is the sine at this angle? Opposite over adjacent would be 1 over the square root of 10. Rationalize it, and you get the square root of 10 over 10. And that's your answer. That's all you have to do. I'll come back and reveal the key for the next one in a moment. I'm just going to jump down to number 15. I want you to, so all that to say, try this one on your own. And I'll reveal the key in a minute. Look at the last one. Use the given value and the given constraints to find the remaining trigonometric functions of the angle. So they're giving me cosine. All they gave me is cosine. And all they told me was that sine is less than zero. So that's y. y is less than zero. My y's are negative. So it's one of my bottom two quadrants, right? So if sine is, I'm sorry, cosine is x over r. I know r is positive. That means x is negative. So this is telling me y's are negative also. So that means it has to be down here in quadrant 3. So if x is negative 3 and r is 7, well, then what the heck is my uh, leg over here? So let's see. It would be 49 minus 9, which is 40. Square root of 40, okay, we can reduce that since 4 times 10, so it'd be 2 square roots of 10, right? Now let's stop and think. Wouldn't it be negative? This leg right here has to be negative 2 square roots of 10 because it's in quadrant 3. So it is asking me on these questions to find all the other very all the other trig functions. So my sign here is going to be negative 2 square roots of 10 over 7. Cosine was given, but I'll write it anyway. Tangent, let's see, opposite over adjacent would be negative 2 square root of 10 over 3. Negative 3 would make it a positive tangent. 
All right, let's just reciprocate these. So cosecant of theta would be, uh, if I do all the rationalizing, I'll have negative seven square roots of 10 over 20. Secant of theta would be negative seven thirds. And the cotangent of theta would be negative three square roots of 10 over two, 20, sorry, 20. Okay, try those out on your own. And then look at number 16. Uh, try this one on your own as well. So pause the video and in a moment I'll just I'll put up the key for those two questions. All right, here's the key for those two questions. Please let me know what troubles you have and when you get to class. Good luck.